to be living under a rock to have not heard about the absolutely viral Netflix TV show Bridgerton, which is based off of a book series written by Julie Quinn. It's a Regency era romance. Every season focuses on a different couple. Every book focuses on a different couple. And everybody knows it's a universal truth that books are always better than the TV show or movie. So we are going to test that out today and I am going to be reviewing, giving my thoughts on the three seasons of Bridgerton versus the books. So let's make a coffee and talk about the Bridgerton TV show. I feel like you'd have to be living under a rock to have not at least heard about this show on Netflix. Everybody has been talking about it, especially as of late because season three just came out. Each season follows a different Bridgerton. There are eight Bridgerton children and each is based on a book. The books I'm reading in this video. I would never have considered watching a historical romance TV show. I don't watch many things like that, but I'm so glad that everyone was talking about how good this show was. And I have serious FOMO about things and obviously had to watch it too. And that was season one, which was forever ago because they take two years between seasons, which in my opinion is way too long. The world is so magical that it almost feels like fantastical. In a lot of ways it kind of is because there's no racism in this show which takes place in the early 1800s where racism was obviously rampant. And it's not entirely historically accurate. The costumes though, amazing. <laughs> I'd probably even go as far as to say that it is one of my favorite shows of the last few years. The only two shows that I can think of that I actively think about all the time and can't wait for another season to come out are Bridgerton, historical romance, and You, thriller about a serial killer. <laughs> Very different. This is also where I confess that I do not typically reread books or rewatch shows or movies unless I really, really like them. I don't even know the last time I reread a book. If I've read it once, I'm probably not going to read it again. I'm not someone that has like comfort reads or reads that I reread every year, every two years. And that's not me. The closest I would have would be the Harry Potter series. I've reread those a number of times. And with Bridgerton, I did rewatch the seasons recently, which my wife thought I was absolutely crazy for because <laughs> she would never rewatch a show or rewatch a book ever. For me, I need to be very invested and like it a lot in order to do so. So with all that being said, it's a lot of pressure to see if these books are going to live up to the show. Because it's held in such a high regard in my mind, I just love the show. I think that they've done so many amazing things with it. But at the same time, books are always better than the show or movie. It's a universal rule. Everybody knows it's just the truth. The books are always better. Is that going to be the case? Time to dive into the first Bridgerton book. The first three books are on Kindle Unlimited, which basically feels like they're free. I do have a copy of the second book. My goal for this video is definitely to read the first book, maybe the second book. I'm not going to read the third book because the third book is Benedict's book and that doesn't follow the timeline of the show. Season one is this one. It is the Duke and I, it's Daphne's story, who is the oldest daughter. The second book is the Viscount who loved me and this is the oldest son's story. Anthony is how it's spelled, but in the show they say it is Antony which I personally don't like. Is that how you say Anthony? I could have sworn that it was a th, th, th and not a t, 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 but here we are. And this is season two. Season three is actually book four, which is Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. And that is also the season that we're currently watching, but it's not on Kindle Unlimited. It's what cost me money and I didn't know if it was a series that I needed to read in order. So I just thought that we'd start here and start at the beginning. I will say that I've actually already started this. I'm not very far in. We're going to go read some more of it now, but I'm 9% in. The few things that I've noticed so far, the casting of the TV show is extremely racially diverse and I do not think the book is that. I know for a fact Simon, who is black in the show, is white in the book. And it also feels like maybe Lady Danbury is white too. I have a feeling that everyone's going to be white. That's the first thing that's really thrown me off. I am going to be very interested to see how true to the source material the show is though. So 
We'll see. I love the shows, so I'm hoping I'm gonna love the books. I actually just did a rewatch of the first season of Bridgerton, which is based off of this book, The Duke and I. I'm actually not someone that enjoys rewatching shows or rereading books. I do it once and that's enough for me normally, but I was rewatching the show. And the reason that I had so much time and could do a rewatch of all of season one and most of season two was we had the norovirus. <laughs> which is absolutely as horrible as you imagine. Trigger warnings for getting sick. And we had it on vacation. We were just in California the day before when we were at Disneyland. And once the night before that, one of the twins threw up. He's never thrown up before. He just threw up randomly once in the night and then randomly once at the park. Then he immediately perked back up and seemed fine. The next day, Allie started feeling a little nauseous. We left Disney, we went to the beach, and while we were at the beach, Allie started getting sick. We got back to the Airbnb and then I started getting sick and then the other twin started getting sick and then my mom got sick. So I basically spent an entire night laying on the couch with a baby on my chest. He's a toddler, he's a year and a half. But a baby on my chest, him and I just watching Bridgerton. So I'm very refreshed in what happens on the TV show for season one. Reading outside, the wife just got home. I have a feeling that it's just because I just finished watching the show, but I'm so engrossed in it because the world building's really good and I feel like I can just perfectly see everything that's happening. Hi, baby. Hi. I feel like I'm there, if that makes sense. You know, like one of those books where you just immediately are engrossed in it? That's what's happening so far, which is always a good sign. So I just finished reading The Duke and I, which is the first Bridgerton book, and honestly, I didn't hate it. I kind of went into it thinking I was going to hate it because I keep hearing everybody say how oh, the show is so much better than the books, but I guess that's what we're determining in this video, my opinion on it. But I thought it was a good book. I don't know what I'm going to read it. I think the books focus a lot more on the couple that the book is about. In this case, it's Daphne and Simon. The show feels a lot more full. They're we're following a lot more side characters. There is a lot more side characters and they all feel a lot more developed. I was shocked that there is no Queen Charlotte in at least the first book, the one I just read. She is such a main character and such a driving force of the story. Daphne also isn't declared the diamond in the first Bridgerton book. In the TV show, she's this wild beauty who is declared like the most sought after woman of the season. In the books, she is nothing special to look at and it's more her personality that captures the duke's attention and i mean there is a lot of similarities in the two but there's no queen charlotte and lady whistledown feels a lot less important in the first book because we're not seeing the kind of rivalry between her and queen charlotte i don't know i really like queen charlotte so i really missed her in the book i will say i absolutely detest the non-consensual seen in both the books and the tv show i just feel like it was completely unnecessary on the part of the author i feel like it could have been resolved in a different way it just felt really icky to me and like it shouldn't have been included in either the book or the tv show i'm currently trying to decide if i should read book number two honestly i just want to read colin and penelope it's the storyline that i'm most excited for especially because it's a season i'm watching should i go get I just don't know. No, I know it is on sale at the bookstore. I saw it the other day, so that's a reason to get it. This weekend did not go the way that I had planned, and I thought I was going to have so much reading time and so much time to film videos for you guys. Um, I think I've cried all the tears that I can possibly cry about it. I have been spending a lot of time here on the couch sleeping here. My wife was supposed to be away for the weekend. She was going to Montreal with a friend and I was going to be here. So on Friday, Allie was at the airport and I came downstairs just to start the day with the kids at like seven something and found our dog, our oldest dog, unresponsive. And I really thought she was going to die then. I was shocked that she made it to the vet. We found out that she has cancer and we don't know how long she has, but we're just taking every day as like this is likely her last day. If we get another day, that's nice too. But that's what's going on behind the scenes, which sucks. So I've been spending a lot of time sitting right here reading Bridgerton with Lily. I think I'm gonna read The Viscount Who Loved Me, which is Anthony's story, who is the oldest Bridgerton. He's going to be the Viscount 
he is the Viscount already, actually. Um, yeah, we're gonna read that. I don't think I got a single aesthetic shot of reading this book because I just read it so quickly. I will confess, I am enjoying these Bridgerton books exponentially more than I thought I would. I really was anticipating to not like them because I really love the show and I have heard that these books do not live up, but I'm devouring them. There is something very bingeable about these books. So much so that I have already started number three. Number three is Benedict's book, which hasn't been a series on Netflix yet. It hasn't been featured in the show, but it's actually the last one on Kindle Unlimited. There's only the first three. So that sucks, especially because I've said I really want to read the Pollen book. Pollen, aka Colin and Penelope. Thoughts on this book. First, did I say that Kate is not Indian in this book? She is white, which is so weird to me because I definitely still picture her as the actress that plays Kate on the show even though she's not. There's so many characters missing from the TV show in these books which is kind of also weird to me. It, these books very much only focus on the love story between whoever the main characters are in that book. We are not getting much if any of the background of all of the other characters in the books. They are very much just little side characters sprinkled in. They do not add much to the story. Versus the TV show, the side characters have so many side quests. There is so many side quests happening on Bridgerton at all times. Some of them honestly feel a little unnecessary, but that's just my own opinion. Season three actually had too many side quests. The second book, this one that I just read, is about the Viscount Anthony, who's the oldest Bridgerton son, and his love interest is Kate. Kate is considered a bit of a spinster. She's older. Her and her sister are on the marriage mart at the same time because the family only had enough money to do the trip once. She's not as wealthy and affluent as a lot of the other families in the books. And Kate actually doesn't anticipate that she is going to find a husband. She's mostly trying to find a husband for her sister who is the diamond. What's she called? She's the the best one of the season, her sister. She's the most beautiful, everyone wants her, and Anthony wants her as well. But since this is Kate and Anthony's love story, you know that some stuff goes down. I liked this, I thought it was good. I think that I'm enjoying the book so much though because of the TV show, because I love the TV show and I love the characters. I'm imagining the characters that I love so much from the TV show as these characters, which I think is helping add to me loving it so much. But I will say something that I just absolutely love about this series is the second epilogue. Hear me out. I am someone who gets a little attached to characters when I'm reading and I absolutely hate when a series ends and I don't know what happens to them for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. I always imagine after, like I wonder what happened next in their life. Which I guess is weird because they're not real, they don't have a what happened after. But I want them to, I want to know what happens. So there is an epilogue in each of these books so far, I mean I've only read two, that takes place sometime in the future, which is nice. It gives you some closure. It lets you know what they're up to. It tells you what happened in their family, if they had children, all of those kinds of things, which is lovely. But then she's added second epilogues. They're available online if you don't get a book that has the second epilogues in it because it's a newer thing, I think. But they give you an insight even further into the future. We're talking like 20 years later. I've never seen anyone do that, a second upload. It's amazing. I just love it. And I love knowing what the author thinks the characters got up to. It makes me so happy. I can't even explain it. It's like a dream for me. I get so attached to characters and I have such a hard time letting them go. So that's just so fun to me that she's done that. I just love it. I want to talk all about my thoughts about the Bridgerton TV show, specifically season three, because it just came out and I need someone to talk to about it. First, I'm going to say, what's better, the TV show or the books? I have read the first two books and watched the first two seasons, so I have the same story in two different formats. What's better? I am going to say that this is indeed one of those very, 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 very rare instances where... The TV show is better than the books. There's a number of reasons for that, but in my opinion, the plot is just so much richer in the TV show because of all of the side characters, because of all the side quests. Also, the visual aspects of the TV show are just so 
beautiful. The costumes, the set design, the cinematography is all just so immaculately done and so immersive and fantastical. And the writing doesn't portray the same level of world building and immersiveness. I've read books that do a very, very good job, but this one was more of a romance and we all know I'm not a big romance girly. I prefer when romance is a subplot and not the plot. In the TV show there are so many plots, there are so many characters, there's so much going on that the romance is just one of those plots and that's what I really like in the books. We're mostly just focusing on the love story between the two characters and for those reasons I am going to say I prefer the TV show to the books. And now the fun part. Let's just talk Bridgerton. This is so spoiler filled. Let's talk season three. Season three was the season I was most excited for. I was most anticipating because for some reason I just love a good friends to lovers and Colin and Penelope are two of my favorite characters. My wife laughs every single time I say I like friends to lovers. Because I always think, do you love your friend? Who I don't. Love? I don't love my friend. I love you. You were my friend. The biggest letdown for me was there wasn't enough Colin and Penelope in my opinion. There was just too much going on, especially in the second half of the season. There was too many subplots. There was too many side characters. There was too many side quests. Too much going on. Not enough focus on Colin and Penelope. I feel like it would have been absolutely perfect if it had two to four more episodes. I think we had enough content that we could have at least got two more episodes in. And it would have just had a better pacing, a better flow. I haven't read the book, so I can't compare them. But I just genuinely love Bridgerton. I don't know what it is about it, but I just love it. Also, when her sister kept saying that the bugs, the bugs, she wanted bugs at the ball, and then it ended up being butterflies was just so beautiful oh my goodness I really like the development in the Featherington family and seeing how their relationship is changing and Penelope and her mom seeing more eye to eye kind of just more understanding where the other person is coming from knowing more of who the other person really is I just thought it was really interesting p.s. I love the name Eloise it was a name that I really wanted to use if we had a daughter we did not have a daughter I have two sons Eloise and Penelope I really wanted them to be friends again so I'm really glad that they made up a bit but I will say in the first half of the season they really had me feeling feelings for poor Cressida Cowper and feeling like her redemption arc was coming and then her just like implode and just mess it all up and have you absolutely hate her even more than you did in the beginning oh. anyway my kids won't stop yelling my wife won't stop coming in and doing loud things my dogs are barking and I think that that might be a sign that this is where I'm supposed to stop talking <sighs> anyway I don't think I ever said let's give both Bridgerton books a four star are they a three spice or a four spice I might just give them a, th a three spice let's give them a three spice level and a four star both anyway if I would have read the books first do I think I would have liked them as much Probably not, I will say. And that's where we're going to leave today's video. Thanks for watching. I know this is something a little different. I just wanted an excuse to reach the Bridgerton books and talk about them with someone. So thank you, my book buddies. I will be back again soon with another video. I don't know if it's next week. I don't know if it's this week. We'll see. The dogs will not stop barking. And I'll be back.